I would like to bring up Connor Murnane. Connor is with the organization FIRE, which is keeping track of this type of thing across campuses and universities across the nation. He will tell you about FIRE and tell you his findings for the University of Virginia, some of which are quite troubling in spite of the good news I just told you. You're gonna have to forgive me. I need notes or I'll start rambling. I don't know how the rest of these folks are working and ad-libbing it, I think Buddy said. Thank you. So, good afternoon. I'm Connor, like Bert said. I do want to express my thanks to Bert and Tom and the rest of the Jefferson Council for inviting me tonight. Um, a little history on fire. Uh, back in 1998, uh, University of Pennsylvania history professor Alan Charles Coors and Boston civil liberties attorney Harvey Silverglade co-authored a book called The Shadow University, The Betrayal of Liberty on American Campuses. This book examined a, what they call the covert system of justice on campuses, exposing the widespread reliance on kangaroo courts and arbitrary punishments to coerce students and faculty into conformity, things we've all seen. In response, and this is in 98-99, they received hundreds of pleas from victims of illiberal policies, double standards that violated their rights, and to you know keep up with the demand to you know continue writing what they were doing pro bono work, but to keep up with this demand. They created the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, FIRE. We're still here today. Unfortunately, Harvey's dream of closing shop in 10 years didn't come to pass. We're you know, now about 80 or so employees, over 30 lawyers at this point. And you know, we're still defending basic rights on college campuses. You know, we litigate, we educate on the philosophy and history of freedom of expression, due process, and academic freedom. In my role at FIRE, I work with alumni, donors, trustees, and groups like the Jefferson Council to bring programs and policies to campuses that create environments where open discourse is you know, practiced, but also preferred. Um, so now, when I, I say we're the leading defender of individual rights on campuses, and I, I truly mean we'll defend anyone at this point. So viewpoint or identity doesn't matter. If expression is protected by First Amendment standards, we defend it, period. We've never in our history commented on the content of speech, only its status under the First Amendment. To this point, you know, we've defended Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, Democratic Socialists, those affiliated with no political party at all, Muslims, Jews, Christians, and atheists. Um, you know, you name a divisive political topic, I'm sure we have been on one side or the other defending speech, promoting it. Um, we even once offered our assistance to a group of Satanists on a campus that were denied recognition. And then they passed because, quote, our morals didn't align with theirs. So I, I'm just going to you know, check that off and hope that earned me some points with the big man upstairs. So the rest of this chat, I want to spend it discussing how FIRE looks at an uh, institution, you know, what we analyze, what we consider when we're trying to figure out how protected speech is on that campus. And I'm going to base all my points on UVA here. So let me first stress, I'm not a lawyer. No, you can keep this last round. Yeah, the data, is too, the data is too interesting. Let me save it for a fun time. So let, let, let me really stress, I'm not a lawyer. FIRE employs <laughs> dozens of capable legal minds, and I'm far from one of them. Um, my legal adventures ended quickly in my misment youth. I, uh, I took con law, and I loved it as I believe a sophomore. And I added pre-law in the major, and then took business law, and I've never dropped anything quicker. You know, the torts, they, I, I, I wanted to bang my head on my desk, tort as a tort as a tort. So let's start with speech codes, you know, everyone's favorite. FIRE defines the speech code as any university regulation or policy that prohibits expression that would be protected by the First Amendment in society at large. Any policy such as a harassment policy, a protest and demonstration policy, or an IT acceptable use policy can be speech codes if it prohibits protected speech or expression. We have a spotlight database on our website that tracks these policies and gives out red, yellow, or green lights to over 450 colleges and universities. A red light had, uh, institution has at least one policy that both clearly and substantially restricts freedom of speech. A yellow light institution has at least one policy that restricts a more limited amount of protected expression, or by virtue of vague wording, is ripe for abuse. And a green light, no policy restricts speech. UVA earns a green light. I know some of you may roll your eyes, and I've, I've had this talk uh, with a few of you, but let me be clear. A green light does not by itself guarantee that a school actively supports free expression. It simply means that FIRE is not currently aware of any serious threats to students' rights in the written policies. That being said, 
lately UVA has entered into some policy that is, you know, we're, we're questioning some wording going back and forth with its administrative leadership to see what happens. And, you know, one I'm sure you guys are all familiar with is the new DEI requirements. Um, these requirements raise some concerns that faculty members may be penalized or disfavored on the basis of their political or ideological beliefs. And then there's some vague harassment policies that have uh, some weak language and fail to live up to the precedents established in the Davis v. Monroe County Board of Education Supreme Court case. Um, the court ruled, and this is kind of fired guideline here for any harassment policy, that harassment must, quote, be so severe, per pervasive, and objectively offensive, and that so undermines and detracts from the victim's educational experience, and it goes on, before school leadership becomes liable for failing to stop it. Um, UVA's policies have a lot of ors and buts, and we kind of question whether or not it's checking those three boxes for harassment to be harassment. So FIRE also monitors and grades institutions on due process practices, I know Nick brought this up. Um, to provide a few examples, we, uh, in you know, sexual misconduct, non-sexual misconduct, in Title IX due process categories, UVA lacks meaningful hearing processes for those accused, um, a right to meaningful cross-examination is in all three of those boxes, or the need for unanimity or a clear and convincing evidence. So we give UVA a C on that, you know, A through F scale. Um, we also sponsor research on the role of free speech in society, monitor viewpoint diversity on campus, and study the uh, economic health of institutions. In addition, you know, we track disinvitations, disinvita uh, disinvitation attempts, and scholars under fire on campus. If you go to our website, you'll find coverage of the attempt or desire, I guess I'll call it, to cancel Mike Pence's UVA talk, that article that was in the student paper. Um, we also have examples of three professors that were placed on suspension or placed under investigation for protected speech at UVA. These examples actually come from both sides of the political aisle. One of the newer and more interesting ways, though, that FIRE studies an institution is the college free speech ranking. Um, FIRE partnered with Real Clear and College Pulse, which is a higher ed uh, focused survey group for this one-of-a-kind study. In 2021, we released the second edition of this survey, which was conducted in the spring semester, and uh, we had 37,104 students respond from 159 campuses. So we ensured a statistically significant sample from every school. Up here is the data on UVA, and I'll get into this more. Um, but on the left is the rating, so we broke it into those categories, as you can see, and the ranking is where it falls out of 159. So, let me continue. So you're all here, pretty obviously, because you believe UVA can be doing better in regards to free speech. Um, I, I do want to tell you you're correct. I think some of these numbers show that. Um, and I think the students would agree, based on some of the examples I have. So while UVA comes 22nd overall, and you may think to yourself that's pretty good, I, I want to tell you you're wrong. You know, look at the 64.5 back when I was an undergrad. You know, that's a D. I, I wouldn't be proud of that at all. Um, that also says something about, you know, the national issue, right? So our, our number one school, Claremont McKenna College, was a 73. So that's, that's our top school at a 73. That's problematic. University of Chicago was our top school in the first year, and it was only a 69. Um, so there, there's a lot of room to go nationally. And I think UVA is an interesting example. You know, in recent weeks, we've had the op-eds, the article about Pence, now Pence is coming. So there's been a lot of talk about censorship uh, lately at UVA. And all these opponents of free expression refuse to look at what the students actually report. I know Emma Camp, I don't know if he's here, but she quoted some of this data, and those, you know, challenged her, oh, you know, those numbers can't be accurate, blah, blah, blah. Fire got into it with Nicole Hannah-Jones. We, you know, had a nice back and forth, and I was pleasantly surprised when she accepted her error and, you know, went our separate ways. But if you look at the data, out of 159 schools surveyed, UVA's own students rank the school number 44 in openness and number 156 in students' comfort expressing ideas in a public setting. So this means that they feel uncomfortable disagreeing with a professor in class, or they don't believe they can safely discuss you know, contentious topics in a public setting. We, we had one student who wrote, quote, I always have to write my papers from a liberal point of view. And that just feels so wrong to read out loud. We had another student on the survey uh, say that they frequently censor themselves. Quote, I'd say any time a controversial subject is raised in class, I feel uncomfortable speaking to it, regardless of the issue. He continues, I'd say that at college, I always feel it is unwise to express my opinions and avoid conversations about controversial subjects with people I don't know personally. What's the point of college if you can't do that? 
right? You know, it, Yale wrote the, uh, the Steve Van Order report in I believe, 1945, and I don't think I've you know heard any argument or read any argument that better explains what you know the point of college is. And this report, uh, as they're you know speaking towards the purpose of the university, they state, quote, the history of intellectual growth and discovery clearly demonstrates the need for unfettered freedom, the right to think the unthinkable, discuss the unmentionable, and challenge the unchallengeable. To curtail free expression uh, strikes twice at intellectual freedom. It affects the speaker and the rights of the listener. So UVA has developed this culture in which many students are too worried to speak up, and they report it themselves. This isn't, you know, folks who graduated two or three decades ago. This isn't some, you know, DC nonprofit think tank. This is, you know, 252 or 253 UVA's on students. So it's developed this culture, and it's losing what made it a prestigious institution. And much of the fault lies on the administration. UVA's own students in their belief in the administration's willingness to defend the rights of the controversial speaker, they ranked at 109 out of 159. You know, students are clearly losing faith, and personally, I don't see President Ryan doing much to it back. The Chicago statement was recently passed, and that's great, but it's, it's a piece of paper if there's no institutional buy-in. And I think the administration needs to speak more to that, and that's why I'm glad you folks are. So you know, thankfully, alumni like yourselves are beginning to speak up because, frankly, you're going to outlast any cohort of students and even administrative tenures. You know, if the administration is willing to preserve free expression, which is the lifeblood of an education, like that Yale report says, and it's up to you to bring programs to campus that will immerse students in open discourse and dialogue, the speaker series, these partnerships. So the longer I work in this field, the more optimistic I am in seeing a room this packed of people willing to volunteer their time does wonders to give me that confidence. But the, the fight to fix you know, this culture is going to be long. It's going to take a Jefferson Council on every campus. And I'm glad the Jefferson Council is involved because I think they're that driving factor. You have four or five other alumni groups represented here, I think you said. That's fantastic. And you know, FIRE's honored to partner with you in this fight. So I know this has been quick, but all this information is on our website at thefire.org. I want to thank you for your time. And if you have any um, questions or want to discuss this further, that's my email and phone number. And I'm happy to chat in the future or later tonight.